All right, great, let's get started. So welcome to Tech Canada's Deeper Insights webinar series, where we spotlight topics designed to equip business leaders with the insights necessary to strategically approach the complex business issues and uncertainty that surrounds us. Deeper Insights features industry experts, thought leaders on crucial subjects, who allow viewers to enhance their perspective and overcome challenges quicker. I'm Brandy Hunter, the Operations Manager for Tech Canada, and I'm pleased to host this latest installment of Tech Canada's Deeper Insights webinar. Today, I'm joined by Thomas Benjo. Thomas is the President and CEO of FHQ Developments. Thomas was a founding Board of Directors member of FHQ before being named President and CEO in 2016. Thomas brings a wealth of experience in First Nations economic development, entrepreneurship, community development, business administration, and commercial banking. Thomas is committed to Aboriginal business development and FHQ development's guiding vision for securing business partnerships that result in wealth generation and First Nation equity ownership in key economic sectors. Is your business beginning to take steps towards reconciliation? Indigenous engagement has been a hot topic for many business leaders who want to create impact in their community. We need to go beyond land recognition and focus on Indigenous engagement that is authentic. Today, Thomas will help us understand what it means to advance Indigenous inclusion along the diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging continuum. Before I hand everything over to Thomas, I'll cover a few housekeeping items. Today's presentation and handout will be made available for download in the comments section of both Zoom webinar and LinkedIn Live. And the recording of this webinar will be made available on our website and on our YouTube channel. If you have questions, please use the chat function and we'll be sure to get to as many questions as possible. I am pleased to once again, welcome Thomas to our Deeper Insights webinar. Thomas, welcome. Thanks, Brandy. Um, happy to be here and uh, looking forward to sharing uh, information with everyone today. So super exciting. Great. All right, all right. Well, good morning, everyone. And uh, appreciate you taking the time to listen in and learn uh, a little bit more about, uh, you know, what it means to have um, uh, indigenous engagement uh, strategies for your organizations. We, you know, there's uh, there's a lot of buzz uh, as of late, just in regards to a lot of the things that are occurring in our communities uh, right across Canada, um, and even into the U.S. Now, um, I, I know some of the issues around unmarked graves and um, uh, Orange Shirt Day. That there's there's been a lot of um, a lot more efforts uh, that organizations are looking to make um, in order to um, build relationships and, and truly understand how um, your organization can uh, work with First Nations um, to build a, a better uh, community around us. And so um, that's what we'll we'll cover today. So, so uh, Brandy did a great job of just uh, uh, giving some background on uh, who I am. I'm actually, uh, I'm from Muscopedic First Nation, which is here in Treaty 4 territory in, in Saskatchewan. Um, I am, uh, my background, I am Dakota, uh, Cree and Soto. Um, I, I have, uh, you know, an education, a really unique education. I, I have the pleasure of being able to go to First Nations University of Canada and learn from uh, Indigenous professors and, and uh, be able to build a, a business degree around um, you know, Indigenous business, economic development, and, and uh, First Nations governance. Um, so really unique background. Also uh, worked in the banking industry um, for about six years uh, with RBC and uh, was able to help uh, make some changes inside of RBC as well around Indigenous um, policies and engagement efforts and um, was able to help advise and, and uh, help work with First Nations directly uh, across uh, Saskatchewan and uh, with other nations across Canada. Um, I am a former chair of the Saskatchewan Chamber of Commerce, and uh, if you haven't been following what's happening with uh, within the Saskatchewan Chamber of Commerce, there's um, actually some major resources and initiatives that have uh, occurred there. There is an Indigenous um, uh, uh, plan that has been put into play. Um, and it serves as a resource for our business community in Saskatchewan. We actually have quite a number of organizations right across Canada that utilize the resources um, that we've established there. And it's uh, it's been a wealth of knowledge for um, organizations and has helped give a lot of the business community in Saskatchewan some 
um, key pointers on you know things that we need to work on um, in our community. Um, I, I do serve on several boards, advisory committees um, to different organizations, um, all with the purpose of, of trying to uh, ensure that Indigenous engagement um, is a bit more authentic and that um, we're able to provide the appropriate connections into community. Um, and it's it's about advancing uh, the relationship with First Nations and uh, our Métis communities as well. So I, I've served on uh, quite a number of boards and, and helping to uh, advance those efforts. Um, like Randy said, I'm, I'm a founding director of uh, FHQ Developments and as well um, have now had the pleasure of serving almost six years as uh, president and CEO of the organization. Um, and I am a, a former tech member. Um, I appreciated the time uh, working with tech and, and helping to develop myself as an executive. Uh, so in terms of, you know, who FHQ Developments is, I think it's really important for um, everyone to understand who we are. Uh, as an organization, we were established back in 2010. Uh, we are owned by 11 First Nations of the File Hills Coppell Tribal Council, which is here um, in Saskatchewan. Uh, we do have over 16,000 citizens, and um, our organization has had um, the opportunity to grow over the years and really develop a model um, that is best um, uh, focused on our Indigenous value systems. And because we're so unique in, in terms of uh, the diversity of, of um, tribes um, uh, within our own tribal council, because we do represent five uh, distinct uh, uh, tribes um, that are, uh, you know, home to this territory. Um, they all have, you know, their own unique processes, their own unique um, languages and, and um, uh, ways of knowing and and so, you know, having that diversity even amongst our, our tribes has helped us as a tribal council be a bit more open-minded and, and a lot more strategic about how we build relationships um, amongst our own nations, but also with um, uh, our, our neighbors uh, throughout our territory. So our, our organization does uh, focus on investments and partnerships. And, and uh, uh, so we do invest in a number of companies. We also, um, have a focus around economic development, which means we're building the Indigenous business ecosystem around us. And we also have an Indigenous HR uh, solutions division that actually uh, is, is currently helping with um, both the long-term and short-term needs of helping to fill some of the Indigenous labor gap. Um, really unique to our organization and, and our long-term strategy is actually really unique. Um, and uh, you know we're we're focused on trying to work more uh, in community and uh, working with partners over you know up to a ten year period. Um, so really unique things that we're doing here, and um, you know it's really important that you know we take the time to uh, pause in our busy day and and be able to share some of our learnings. And and this is one way in in which we do that as an organization is you know working with organizations like Tech Canada. Um, to be able to share some of the resources that uh, we've developed and, and some of the knowledge that we've been able to um, come to understand and, and help uh, organizations moving forward. So one of the things that uh, uh, my uh, uh, tech coach uh, that I did have uh, when I was with Tech Canada, uh, Linda Allen Hardesty, um, you know, it, it made me think, you know, what, what, what is my own purpose as uh, an individual? Um, what am I trying to accomplish uh, in, in the roles that I play, uh, in the work that I do in the community and the work that I've, I've done in the past? And, you know, to, to sum it up, um, the, the things that I'm, I'm really doing, I'm, I'm trying to enhance the, the livelihood of our, um, of my people and, and the prosperity and, and give, um, and do it in a way um, where I'm passionate. I'm, I'm very passionate about business, economic development, and, and governance. Um, and you know, people do question sometimes. Well, why governance? Why? What's so important about governance? Well, governance is the is the systems um, that help um, to establish the process in which we are able to um, uh, develop strategy and, and implement strategy and ensure that we're following. Um, you know, 
appropriate processes so that we are uh, more successful. And so these these things are really important to me. And, and you know, this is um, some of the things that I'm very passionate about and making sure that, um, you know, we are uh, recognizing First Nations as being um, major economic drivers in our economy, um, but also um, helping to understand some of the challenges um, uh, at a deeper level um, so that, you know, things are not just, you know, what we see on the surface or what we hear in the news, um, that there are, you know, major underlying issues that have been created um, through um, not so great uh, policy uh, creation over time uh, with First Nations. And so it's, it's time for us to unwind some of those systems, uh, some of the colonial systems that we have in place. And, and, you know, the best way that I can do that is through business economic development and governance. Uh, so I, I know we have, uh, so, you know, why is Indigenous engagement um, important for your business? Um, I think we have, you know, these, these three areas um, that, that typically come up. One, um, obviously TRC and the calls to action. Um, uh, for those of you uh, on the call, I'm, I'm sure, um, you uh, are aware of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission um, and the 94 calls to action that have been established um, so that um, you know, non-Indigenous Canadians across Canada, uh, depending on what their field, what field they are in, um, you know, how can I help? What can I do? Um, what are some of those um, uh, guiding resources that I can utilize to try to enhance um, livelihood for Indigenous people. Um, you know, there, there's a tremendous amount of resources that have been published. Um, and this all comes, of course, from uh, the actions uh, through um, some of the history with residential schools. Um, so how do we, how do we fix the, the gaps that have been created? And so a lot of organizations will say, you know, we, we have an interest in doing Indigenous engagement because of the calls to action. Um, we want to be a better uh, corporate citizen, and so we're, we're committing to looking at some of these actions and, and uh, implementing them within our organization. Um, I've actually had the pleasure of working not just with business organizations, um, but also with sports organizations, and I was very proud of some of the work that they've been able to do in, in terms of, um, you know, not just meeting some of the business action items from um, the calls to action, but also looking at well, how can we enhance sport in the community, given that, you know, this is our expertise. And so they've done a number of initiatives in the community to invest in Indigenous youth, getting that um, opportunity to participate in, uh, in sport and helping to remove barriers. So very, um, very excited about, you know, the, the opportunities that the calls to action create and, and um, uh, of course, uh, building out uh, those resources. And I, I think, you know, one of the things that, uh, you know, as, as I kind of go through this process, um, there is a lot of focus on reconciliation in a lot of the, the TRC processes. Um, but sometimes what I ask organizations to do is be a bit more vulnerable and, and take the time to understand truth, understand where this comes from, understand why we're doing this, why this is so important, um, because it helps once, once leaders uh, like yourselves and your organizations, once you understand you know, what the truth is behind, you know, what has happened in our history and acknowledge that history because it, um, a lot of this history has been, has not been shared um, through our own Canadian history. And so being able to be a bit vulnerable and learn and, and understand and, and teach your children, teach your families um, and have your staff take the time to understand it, it helps to build a better understanding around the reconciliation efforts. And so it, it creates better buy-in uh, from uh, those people that are around us that we want um, uh, to ensure that they're understanding why we're doing this. Um, in some of your industries, you may uh, be working in the resource sector. Um, so a duty to consult is, is another um, policy that has been created um, to ensure that uh, when we are developing uh, resources in uh, territories close to uh, First Nations communities, um, that there is a process that we go through to work with those communities to ensure that they're aware 
um, to ensure that they're involved in the process um, and, and ensure that there is buy-in from that community. Um, so a lot of the resource sector, they um, there is very specific outlines around duty to, duty to consult and uh, the federal government actually has uh, a number of processes that organizations will have to go through um, to ensure that there is true um, uh, uh, relationships being built with First Nations uh, within those impacted zones. Um, or, uh, you know, the, the third one here is just, you know, you, you may be an organization that, you know, um, may just want to, you know, build a better community. And so, you know, how, how do I do this uh, as an organization where, you know, I don't have these requirements, but I want to do something. I, I feel in my heart that I should do something as an organization um, and I want to build those relationships. And so, um, you know, those are typically the three uh, sort of areas that uh, organizations will take a step back and say, okay, well, why do we want to uh, create Indigenous engagement, and these are um, typically the areas that they would, they would fall under. So where do I start? Uh, I, I know you're uh, well aware of um, a lot of these different areas, uh, land acknowledgements, community investment, Indigenous awareness training, policy development, building relationships, um, buying or procuring products or services, um, some even go as far as creating uh, space for Indigenous people on boards, um, hiring Indigenous people. You know, these are just some of the things that organizations, um, you know, take the time to invest in uh, within their organization. And so I, I know, you know, there's a lot of ideas out there. And um, I, I think, you know, going through this process that, that we had um, around the Indigenous Engagement Charter for uh, the Saskatchewan Chamber of Commerce. I mean, a lot of these things were talked about and, um, you know, where we uh, landed as an organization was, um, well, not everyone is in the same boat. You know, we, we can't just say everyone has to do all of these things all at once. We just, some of our organizations don't have the resources. Um, and so how do we make this as flexible as possible and custom to those organizations that are making this commitment, um, how do we get them to understand that uh, the efforts that they're making are uh, important and uh, um, are unique to their organization? Um, so, you know, how do we make sure that we're uh, properly communicating that with them? And, uh, you know, there's little things that we can start out with and, you know, set benchmarks towards, you know, how can I do more over time as my business grows or as I, uh, as an organization, want to increase the amount of engagement um, over time with First Nations. And so um, that's where a lot of, uh, I, I think, organizations uh, get a bit confused about, well, where do I start? And then, you know, these are just uh, some of the areas that, uh, uh, that they focus on. So one, one thing I want to um, really highlight here is uh, I, I, I use this um, diagram quite often to uh, explain sort of the continuum that we're on in, in trying to build a relationship with, uh, uh, with Indigenous communities um, and try to get organizations to better understand what it means to actually uh, have an engagement strategy. And then, I mean, you could take this in uh, utilize the same information across, uh, uh, you know, other um, uh, groups that uh, you're working with. Um, but, you know, when I think about the Indigenous context, um, trying to understand where uh, it fits under some of, you know, organizations, diversity and inclusion, or DNI and um, strategies. And um, so what I tell organizations, so when, when we talk about diversity, um, Diversity is that first step. So it's it's being invited to the dance. So being invited to the dance means, you know, you've invited a First Nations community or you've taken some initial steps to build a relationship. You know, they're now a part um, of uh, perhaps uh, attending something within your organization or you've communicated with them. Um, you're, you're acknowledging 
uh, that those nations exist and that um, you want to be able to uh, begin um, building a relationship uh, with that nation and, and being able to build an understanding. And so that, that's some of the uh, early first steps um, and, and diversity helps to cover some of that um, initial first steps and, and um, just having uh, an indigenous nation or individual feel like they're a part of your organization. Um, the next part of this is, is equity. So being asked to dance. So you're, you're now asking that nation or that individual, um, you know, getting to know them, uh, getting to uh, have them be a little bit more uh, actively involved in your organization. Um, you're taking, you know, next steps to uh, deepen the relationship. Um, you may be trying to build a deeper understanding of, of who they are. So you're asking um, greater questions about um, some of the history or um, context of the relations that have occurred in your community with that uh, nation or individual. And just trying to build that understanding um, so that uh, when opportunity does arise within your organization, um, that they feel more comfortable, um, that they feel um, included in your processes and uh, that they're able to um, uh, begin interacting with um, your organization's uh, culture. Uh, so that's equity. Um, so it's, it's being asked to the dance. Now, um, when we move into inclusion, uh, this is where organizations need to be uh, a bit more vulnerable. And so now what you're asking is that the nation partner or individual, um, you're actually asking them to take the lead. You know, getting their deeper insights, getting their feedback, um, help, uh, helping them break out of their shell so that they can share uh, information with you or um, that you're being a bit more vulnerable and, and asking, you know, am I doing the right things? Am I... Um, you know, as, as part of my Indigenous engagement efforts, are these the right things that I should be doing? And, and having that um, Indigenous individual or nation or uh, organization help to guide you um, and, you know, taking that approach that, well, I don't know it all um, and nor am I an expert on Indigenous engagement, you know, what would an Indigenous person say to the strategies that we have as an organization? How do I get that um, appropriate feedback and how do I allow them to uh, come into our organization and help to make some of that change so that it is more authentic, that it is um, uh, have some of the Indigenous voice behind it. Um, that way, uh, you know, when you do start to implement um, some deeper strategies around inclusion, then you're going to feel more comfortable as an organization uh, in being able to uh, uh, advance some of those efforts forward. Now, the, the last step here and, and the biggest step and the most vulnerable um, for any organization is belonging. And so what does that mean? Well, it, it means that now your indigenous um, partners um, have an ownership stake in what you're doing. Uh, they have an ownership stake in the strategy. They have an ownership stake in the planning. They're able to effectively provide input. They're able to talk about um, what is the greater impact we want to create in our community and how do we ensure um, that the indigenous voice that we have in the room um, understands that their voice is um, uh, valued and that we are giving um, true structure to uh, the role that they play. So this could be, um, you know, some of the board positions and, and helping to shape strategy uh, for your organization. Um, this could mean that uh, you've actually allowed an Indigenous organization to come in and help to draft some of the policies of your organization moving forward. You may be a large organization. We actually do this um, uh, already uh, as FHQ Developments, and I've been invited to uh, work with some of our customers. It's a bit strange, you know, to have um, have you know our voice in there around procurement strategies that are going to directly you know benefit us as an organization. 
Um, but it's the acknowledgement from our partners that, you know what, we, we don't know how to do this appropriately. And so your feedback and your information, your um, strategies that you have as an Indigenous organization is valued within our organization. And we want to work together. We want to build um, a strategy together. Um, so being able to, you know, have that that sense of belonging that we all own the strategy together um, is the, you know, most uh, engaging part of that continuum of, of building uh, that relationship um, through your Indigenous engagement process. So a lot of you will ask, um, you know, how do I ensure um, my business is taking the right steps uh, towards Indigenous engagement? And I know we all want to feel like we're, you know, are we doing the right things? Are, are we, um, you know, where's, where's that uh, uh, feedback that I'm going to get? And so, um, you know, as we kind of go through, um, you know, taking the right steps and, and you know, being authentic about uh, what it is that we're doing, um, you know, it, it starts with, you know, what do I need? To know? I, I think that's a very important first step uh, with any organization, with anyone that's working on, you know, building those relationships with First Nations. And, um, you know, the, the best advice I have for organizations is, is start with the Indigenous awareness training. Um, I know we have four seasons of reconciliation, which is actually, <coughs> excuse me, through um, uh, First Nations University of Canada. Um, and I think they've partnered with RBC actually, and um, currently the, uh, the training is free. Um, but just being able to take that step of, of learning and um, getting some of the basics of, you know, what do I need to know? How do I need to, um, for myself and for my family or for my organization, how do I start to uh, understand some of these uh, aspects that I may not have known um, about the Indigenous community and break down some of the myths and, and barriers that uh, uh, exist in, in that relationship. Um, once you kind of get your footing around feeling a little bit more comfortable, you know, now it's time to begin gaining an understanding of the nations that surround your organization. So depending on the territories that your, your business is involved with, or if your business is expanding into new areas and you want to have a uh, a uh, stronger relationship with those nations, you know, what, what um, time are you going to spend to gain some knowledge about um, the uh, local First Nations groups or Métis groups um, that you uh, uh, will uh, come in contact with over time as you um, manage your business going forward. Um, and also just understanding some of the historic, what, what are some of the historic relationships? What are the things that you've heard? Um, you know, you're going to get two sides of the story sometimes um, from, you know, an Indigenous perspective and a non-Indigenous perspective about relations, but it's important to um, build an understanding about around those things. And, and having that Indigenous awareness training behind you will help you to navigate through um, things that are, you know, myths or uh, misconceptions about First Nations. So it, it, it helps to better prepare you for those um, sometimes could be un uncomfortable conversations um, around the relationships that have been built with First Nations. Um, so I think, you know, these, these things are, are really important, um, you know, to do a bit of your, your homework. And I know for us as an organization, we appreciate it when, uh, you know, businesses or new partners or investors have an interest in working with us. Um, it's... Um, gives us a sense of comfortability to building deeper relationships with them when they are uh, more knowledgeable about who we are uh, as an organization. And it, it just helps to build um, relationships a lot quicker, uh, which you know leads into building relationships with their, um, a lot of organizations will, uh, you know, because I am active in the community, they ask me to be, um, or ask me questions from time to time and I'm, you know, happy to oblige. And, um, but identifying um, some of the Indigenous leaders uh, from your community um, that do have the time, and it's uh, important that we respect people's time um, to be able to uh, commit to helping um, 
uh, your organization build an understanding around what it means to, uh, you know, engage um, with local uh, First Nations or Métis communities. Um, so having those those um, uh, key individuals that you can chat with is is really important. It could be, you know, an organization, could be an individual, could be uh, someone from the community itself. Um, just identifying who um, some of those potential leaders are, and again, uh, just ask that you. Uh, are respectful of their time and, and do uh, take that into consideration. Um, be active in the Indigenous community to understand who plays what role. So the only way that we are able to, you know, as with any networking that we do, um, we have to be a part of those events. Um, so there may be uh, First Nations events that are being held in your community. Um, how am I going to build uh, a relationship with First Nations if I don't know what these events are and, and just um, having that exposure, um, you know, it, and also for a lot of our uh, communities, we notice you um, when you are, you know, actively participating in some of our, our events and, and taking that time to learn, um, you know, we acknowledge that and, you know, eventually we'll uh, be able to have, um, you know, conversations around building relationships and getting an understanding of who you are. And, um, you know, our, our most, you know, our, our communities are very welcoming. And, uh, you know, we're always willing to share about uh, who we are and what we do. And so, um, but you need to be there and it's important to, to be there. Um, establishing a plan. So ensure there's uh, Indigenous participation in the establishment of your plan. Um, so if you have some of those relationships, if you feel a lot more confident now in some of the relationships that have been built, um, you should be able to get feedback from either an individual or an organization that can, can help you along through your plan. Um, think about what are some of the measurable outcomes. And um, again, going back to the Indigenous Engagement Charter, um, you know, we had all sorts of size and scale of businesses. You had your large corporates, which have you know, a tremendous amount of dollars that are set aside for Indigenous engagement um, that they can leverage and they have teams and they have leaders and individuals within the organization helping to uh, um, establish and implement those plans. And then you have your, your small business owner or even your medium sales enterprise um, that, you know, may not have all of these resources, but still want to do the right thing, still want to um, uh, have engagement. And so, you know, it's um, making sure that when we set those measured targets of what it is that we're going to do, um, that it's being realistic to the size and scale of your organization and the resources you have available. Uh, and then, you know, how does this align with what you learn from the nations you share a territory with? So having some of those relationships that you've built um, will give you a better insight into, well, what are the gaps? What are the needs in the community, in our Indigenous community? Um, you know, what do our neighbors need? How can we help uh, with some of these things? And just, uh, it doesn't mean, you know, stroking a check all the time or, or trying to just invest in something. Uh, it could be your time, it could be volunteering, it could be um, just, you know, being there to, to build relationships or um, even just helping to um, build uh, the, the community around you to be more aware. Um, you know, one, one of the interesting things that uh, has actually come up for us as an organization, you know, we're um, quite involved in uh, the resource sector. And so, you know, we have to work in a lot of um, locations and we have a lot of Indigenous employees that work for us as well. Um, we go into certain territories where there hasn't been great relations with First Nations. Um, and so, you know, we, we have to not only think about our business, sometimes we have to think about, well, what does that mean? for livelihood in that community. And, you know, if we don't have people making efforts towards these things or helping to teach their family, um, we've run into situations where our own staff and even myself uh, going into some of these rural communities um, has been very difficult uh, for me, for my family, for friends. Um, and so, by having more advocates that are taking the time to do this, like just that, just making that effort, um, it helps to change uh, some of that in the community. And you know, you're able to um, speak out uh, when there's uh, situations that arise uh, that that could make it uncomfortable for an 
indigenous person be a part of your community. So those those uh, efforts are are uh, definitely valued from an indigenous perspective. <clears throat> so just going back to the indigenous engagement continuum um, and talking about you know where does some of these things fit? Where does some of these strategies fit um, as we kind of work through this continuum? Um, when we look at diversity, so being invited, um, you know, things like land acknowledgements, uh, being a part of the events, like these are all um, things that we could be doing today, um, establishing communications with Indigenous communities, um, just building relationships. Like these are all things that, that um, are the low hanging fruit that we can start doing today. Um, and, and even, you know, with some of the uh, awareness training um that can you know hopefully uh help build some confidence for you um to be able to have those conversations and ensure that uh, uh we feel a lot more comfortable around um, having uh the ability to build those relationships equity is uh, being asked to the dance the indigenous awareness training um, hiring indigenous talent um, community investment early stage procurement uh so this is a part of being asked to the dance. It's it's now um, starting to acknowledge and, and to be a bit more active in the community and helping to set some of those early foundations um, around uh, some of the more long-term things that you want to um, create within your organization. Um, so that's sorry, where- Sorry, Thomas, to interrupt. I uh, have a question from our audience. So it looks like, um, and I did send, uh, we'll be sending a link to our, our live viewers in terms of the um, education you were speaking to. Looks like that's free um, for our RBC until the end of August. And it looks like there's many other, um, you know, organizations offering it. Are you able to provide a little bit more um, details behind that or is there a specific uh, place that we should point people in terms of that specific education yeah I, I think um well there's been um a lot of communication about the four seasons of reconciliation i, I believe you can go on the uh, first nations university of canada website um i know a lot of the social media for rbc has been um trying to point more and more canadians towards the uh, uh that opportunity to take up the training um and you know there there is uh so you know a lot of that training uh for four seasons is um it's focused on sort of big picture uh because there's multiple nations across canada um so being able to take that as sort of a starter um and then like i said building those relationships locally in your community uh there may be other resources that are in greater relation to the people that are in your community um so you know i'm Dakota Cree and, and Soto and um, our teachings are very different. Our relationship building is very different. And so um, our our history is very different. And so, um, you know, to be able to recognize those nations that are within your territory and there may be further, you know, Indigenous awareness training that is more specific to those nations, um, you know, take advantage of those opportunities. And most of the um, you know, post-secondary institutions or maybe consultants that are available, um, uh, that are utilized and uh, they help to bring some of the context more closer to home. Um, when I did work with uh, RBC, this was uh, one of the biggest things that I've, I've shared with them when I, um, I remember taking my first Indigenous awareness training through the bank and I said, whoa, um, you know, some of these things that you have in here, like they're not they are not associated with who I am as an Indigenous person at all. Um, and we're not recognizing the diversity amongst nations um, and tribes across Canada. Um, you know, so I encouraged a lot of um, staff to, yes, take the, you know, main training, but also take the time to see what's available locally. And because um, I know I, I did, you know, would get a lot of questions around, you know, what are protocols and right. uh, around, um, uh, you know, smudging or ceremonies. Um, uh, employees were being invited to ceremonies inside some of the communities. And so um, it, it takes uh, building those relationships to really understand some of the protocols. And, uh, um, you know, we're a very welcoming community. So uh, we're always willing to 
uh, share what those processes are. So um, highly encourage, you know, four seasons of reconciliation, high level, gives you a good sense of, you know, um, what the issues are, what you need to know. Um, but uh, there again, like look for what's uh, available locally uh, within your market that is in relation to those nations. Perfect. Thank you, Thomas. Um, so getting into inclusion, um, this is where a lot of uh, the larger organizations have actually taken the time to um, create uh, Indigenous specific policies. So whether that's procurement or engagement or um, have established strategies to um, invest in the Indigenous community. Um, this is where, you know, you want to have Indigenous participation in those processes and have, um, you know, the communities be a part of that as well. Because if we're going to invest, um, you know, no use putting dollars towards something that's not going to, that's not a priority for our communities. Um, it's, it's better when it's in alignment with some of the initiatives that we have so that it can help us to advance um, uh, some of the strategies that we have in our own communities and, and to help fill uh, the gaps that we may have. And um, as an Indigenous community or organization, we know exactly what those issues are. And so um, those, that relationship building is really important. Um, the creation of your formal engagement plan, having somebody to review that, having somebody to test against it, that's external from your organization, um, doesn't hurt to have, you know, that second set of eyes to say, you know, is this truly meaningful? Um, and, you know, you, again, you have to be vulnerable to the feedback that you receive. Um, don't think that, you know, some of your efforts are um, too short sometimes. Um, if we're just getting started, you know, um, I think people can understand that, you know, you're, you're making some initial efforts, um, but being able to speak to it over a continuum and saying, you know, here's where we are starting this year, here's where we want to be in five years, here's sort of our steps and our plan to get there. Um, the buy-in from uh, our Indigenous community is going to be, okay, we see you, we acknowledge you, we acknowledge the things that you're doing, and we see the steps that you're going to take. Um, and, you know, we do want to be a part of that. And so um, having that feedback is, is critical as you go through that uh, process. Um, supporting and retaining Indigenous talent, so not just hiring. Um, a lot of organizations will come to me and say, okay, we have this strategy. You know, we want to have a certain percentage of our workforce be Indigenous. Um, and that's great uh, to have the participation numbers but we need to look at what's beyond just participation. How are we actually going to support those individuals? How are we gonna develop them? How are we going to ensure that we retain that talent over the long term? And so it requires some investment and some time mentoring. Um, and for a lot of organizations, you know, when I look back at some of the policies that were established back in the nineties and they've spread across, um, you know, over 30 years and. Um, I've seen a lot of Indigenous talent be developed with organizations that have commitments around, you know, hiring Indigenous people. Um, but what ended up happening over time is that Indigenous talent would uh, unfortunately hit glass ceilings within those organizations. They weren't getting the supports. They weren't getting that extra push to go and become senior leaders within the organization. Um, and despite a lot of their best efforts, and, you know, I work with a lot of Indigenous professionals, um, despite their best efforts, you know, they, they just didn't feel like they're going to be able to, um, you know, take that next step within an organization. And so, you know, most times they'll leave that organization, they'll come to work for a First Nations organization where we say, absolutely, we're going to support you. We want to see, in that, uh, see you in an executive position. Um, I think we have, you know, great demonstration of that through um, Saskatchewan Indian Gaming Authority here in Saskatchewan, um, where that organization, um, it doesn't matter what walk of life you're coming from, they are there to develop Indigenous talent, and they've developed ind Indigenous talent all the way through the organization, right, um, from the front line to uh, the senior executive. So think about that in your organization. That's that's what that means, is, is making... Uh, those additional uh, efforts around um, really developing that talent. Um, strategic investment in, into the community, um, again, getting that feedback, understanding what the true needs are, 
um, is really important. And I think this next step is um, strategic partnerships. And that's a lot of things that we work with organizations on in our investments and partnerships division is uh, organizations that want to take that next step in business to look at um, potential, potentially creating a whole new business together with another uh, or with a First Nations community or organization. Um, we've seen this uh, work for us very well, where we're partnering with very large organizations and um, developing new businesses together. And that helps to build our equity, helps to build assets, helps to build indigenous talent. So there's all of these tremendous things that are happening uh, in those relationships. Um, so that's you know a, a further step that organizations are taking. And finally, belonging, you know, owning the dance. So um, this is where you may look at, you know, Indigenous ownership. I think there's examples right across Canada where Indigenous organizations are taking a major ownership stake in companies um, or projects um, where you have things like LNG um, that nations are saying, hey, well, we want to own some of these projects. We want to own the assets. Um, we want to be a part of that long-term multi-generational wealth. Um, and being a part of those projects, you know, we're going to need support and, um, you know, there's tremendous relationships and, and uh, uh, creation of new programs that are helping to make sure that that's very successful. Um, making space for Indigenous people on, on boards. Um, you know, when we talk about some of the Indigenous engagement strategies and for some of the larger organizations, you know, I'm often challenging them and saying, okay, you've put these strategies in place, but um, is there a key decision maker from the board level that is helping to support this? You know, do we have an Indigenous individual um, being able to challenge the, the thought process around what we're trying to accomplish, to challenge some of the benchmarks or goals that we've set? Um, are we setting things too easy? Um, do we need to challenge ourselves more? How do they, because from a board perspective, you're able to see everything, right? You are, you are 50,000 feet above everything, uh, but you have all of the information needed to make strategic decisions. And so understanding the resources and challenging the organization to do more, um, you can only get that from the board level. And so you know, we ask organizations to make that consideration if that is something they, they truly want to see a major impact for. Um, setting those benchmarks and goals, like I said, um, being able to get uh, appropriate feedback on uh, what we're actually setting as benchmarks is, is really important. Um, and that the goals that we set, you know, how are we doing that together with our Indigenous community, um, whether that's, you know, our, with our local uh, territory or broadly, um, how are we ensuring that we're getting that uh, key feedback that when we are setting those goals that it is, um, you know, not only just work uh, that the organization is going to do, but our own Indigenous communities are there to help and they want to see advancement. And so they're willing to help too. And so how do we how do we do that together um, rather than just seeing the organization do this on their own? Um, really important, again, getting great feedback um, really helps to uh, uh, strengthen and really authenticate the uh, um, uh, the work that we're going to do on Indigenous engagement. And, you know, you can take this um, from a large corporate or, you know, take this to um, smaller scale, with, you know, a smaller medium sized enterprise and, you know, try to make some of these things work um, and, and customize um, some of the advice you're, you're hearing today uh, into your organization. And um, that's, that's the best way that, uh, you know, we can uh, develop these strategies uh, uh, more appropriately. So that is it for me. <coughs> uh, so I am uh, curious at some of the questions um, that participants uh, have uh, this morning. And um, yeah. What Great. You think? Yeah. So um, you talked about where to start, and I, and I love that you kind of walked us through some of that. Uh, one of the questions that came through is that um, there's a lot of fear around getting it right. What if if um, an organization believes they've actually made a mistake on this front? What what would you recommend for them? Um, I, I you know it, it goes back to that relationship building, um, you know, and trying to find those those 
um, leaders from the community that you can really test this against. Like I, I can't stress that enough. Having those relationships with the right people is really important. Um, I know we're, we're going through this process with actually a number of organizations where we are changing some of their policies and, um, you know, they come to us and uh, they ask us the tougher questions as an organization because we're, um, you know, we, we give them that space to, to feel more vulnerable um, in asking um, questions that sometimes may feel uh, a bit out of, uh, out of touch. Um, but they feel comfortable because uh, we've made that space for them. Um, not saying that every Indigenous individual or organization is going to think that way um, or have the resources or tools to be able to work with an organization like that. Um, but, you know, it's, it, that's why you have to have a bit of a bench of, of uh, resources or people that you can go to um, and sort of test um, the, the knowledge. And I know um, you know, we're working actually with the city right now, city of Regina, um, they're uh, introducing a new indigenous engagement policy and, you know, they chose, you know, we are a part of that circle, but they've also included, um, other nations. And so now they're getting a broad perspective of, uh, feedback, um, that is different from my own. Um, and, and that's part of that whole, you know, diversity piece, right? And, um, it's, it's not only diversity amongst, um, uh, people in our community, but there's diversity, like I said, amongst, uh, our nations and amongst our tribes. And so having, having that, uh, feedback, um, and, and having a broader audience to be able to challenge those thoughts with is, is really critical. Um, I, I don't think you're doing the wrong thing if you are, um, beginning to make a commitment. Uh, I, I would just, you know, say that, you know, make those, uh, make those initial uh, commitments and then just find the right resources to um, be able to test some of those thoughts around. Great. And, and what about the difference, Thomas, in terms of, um, you know, you talked about um, inviting to the board and things such as that nature from a, a larger organization perspective, but what about for small business owners, um, you know, that are much smaller and, and obviously, you know, budgets are probably smaller, but at the same time, they want to make an impact. They want to be, they want to be doing something. What would you say to that, those types of organizations? Yeah, this was uh, actually an interesting conversation that we had when we went through the engagement charter because we did have quite a number of small business owners that were a part of our uh, working group um, and or task force. And um, we did this uh, strategically because we wanted that feedback from, you know, the non-Indigenous business owner from um, small business, medium-sized enterprise, large corporate and um, the feedback we are getting from a lot of the small businesses was whoa, you know, we see, you know, so-and-so organization doing all of this. I don't have the money for that. I don't have the resources, but I want to do something. How do I do something? And, you know, I'm, I'm located in a uh, place where there is no, you know, local First Nations surrounding my business, but I still want to do something. How do I do something? And so, you know, we, um, that's why we built sort of the resource list of, you know, these are the things that you need to consider um, when establishing your, your plan and, you know, it could be as small as, you know, find a supplier, you know, is there an indigenous supplier that you can buy from, you know, at least you're, you're creating an impact there and you're creating a whole new relationship with an indigenous supplier. Um, even though, you know, you're missing all of these resources to be able to, uh, invest in, you know, close to your business, you're still making that little effort, um, that does have an impact. Uh, on that Indigenous business. So um, that was how, uh, you know, one of the really unique um, uh, scenarios came from one of the uh, business owners that was, you know, in a small town um, running a couple of businesses. And, you know, and, you know, they actually really wanted to hire First Nations, but I said it's a little difficult because, you know, there's no surrounding communities. And, um, but, you know, still pointed them to the right resources. And like I said, that the, there is resources online through the Saskatchewan Chamber of Commerce. And we're actually um, working with our new CEO now to actually expand some of those resources right across Canada uh, so that other uh, chambers of commerce across Canada can actually utilize those resources. And you don't have to be a chamber member to access our website and to access all of those resources. And 
Um, something that was really interesting that I learned from our management team within the chamber was the second uh, most visited part of our website was the Indigenous Engagement Charter, uh, besides the main landing site. Um, so, uh, you know, tons of resources, um, take a look there and, uh, you know, you can start navigating on, on how you, know, you want to use those effectively inside your business. That's great. And if anyone that's live with us today, or of course, obviously, we'll be posting this on our website and our YouTube channel. If somebody wants to get a hold of you, has questions, Thomas, um, you know, wants to follow up with you, where where, where do they find you? Um, well, I use the social media channels. Um, LinkedIn's probably uh, an area where I'm, I'm most active in. Um, I get all sorts of questions and it's, it comes at all hours of uh, the day and, and night uh, when people are, um, you know, thinking about these things, you know, they, they want to be able to uh, challenge some of their own thoughts. And so, you know, they, they'll send me a message and, you know, they respect my time and allow me to respond when I can, um, you know, knowing that I'm very busy as well, but, uh, you know, I, I try to make sure that, uh, um, I'm providing, you know, either some feedback or, or, uh, some resource, uh, that they can connect in with, but, uh, yeah, LinkedIn works best and we try to, you know, keep as much content as we can, um, about some of the things that I'm doing, but also, uh, what we're doing from FHQ developments because we're, um, very forward thinking, uh, organization. Wonderful. That's great. Uh, I'm going to sneak in one more question because we're 1057. So I think we have time for it. But uh, what are some of the most common misconceptions you encounter when starting to talk to a business about Indigenous engagement and participation? Some of the biggest misconceptions, uh, and actually this, this came up yesterday, was uh, a lot of the organizations, um, uh, especially around business and um, they think that we don't have the capacity to do certain things. Mm -hmm. And when I start to share about all of the tremendous work that we're doing as an organization, when I look at our businesses, um, there isn't anything that we can't do. So we were talking about, you know, major projects and are we, uh, you know, we're looking at building such and such an asset and, um, you know, they came to me and said, well, you know, where do we find indigenous businesses that can do this work? And I said, well, we can actually do it all. I said, right from the engineering to the construction, to the finishing, to the uh, maintenance and, and management of that asset over the long term. Um, but, you know, I, I said, you know, <laughs> some of our indigenous organizations sometimes, and, and I'm guilty of this as well. We don't share enough about all of the great things that we do or our capacities and, but our capacities are constantly changing. And so that's one of the biggest misconception I would say um, from a business perspective is that uh, we are highly uh, under um, uh, or, or we're underestimated in, in terms of our capabilities of being able to, uh, to do work and, uh, you know, being able to do work together, build relationships, um, do business together. That's one of the best ways that we can um, manage through some of the economic reconciliation um, through the TRC. And so um, that's, that's probably one of the biggest ones that I see. Great. Thank you so much. Well, thank you, Thomas, so much for helping us to understand what it means to, to advance um, the relationships with the Indigenous community and, and advance that Indigenous inclusion but also how to take meaningful steps forward and, and where to find these resources. I think that's going to be very beneficial for our audience today. So thank you. So everyone, please join us again in two weeks when we dig deep into more pressing issues from business leaders um, and register for all of our upcoming webinars at techcanada.com. And we'll see everyone in two weeks again. Thank you, Thomas. What a pleasure. All right. Thanks, Brandy. Take care, everyone.